Today I'm going to take a look at two new USB ADXL boards that you can use to measure resonance with Clipper. The first is the Portable Input Shaper by Feistech. It is USB-C based on a Raspberry Pi chip. It has two mounting holes in the traditional locations, but this is being targeted to Voron users, so it also has two sets of other mounting options and comes with hardware. One for the Trident or 2.4 stealth burner and one for the afterburner as well. The other option we're going to look at is the Nozzle ADXL by Provoked. It also uses USB-C, but it is different in that it mounts directly to the nozzle of your hot end. The theory is that by measuring the resonance at the nozzle, you're going to get the most accurate and useful information for your input shaping algorithm. One thing to note with this board is that even though it looks like it will fit because there's an oversized hole for the nozzle, it is not recommended to use this board with any of the E3D Revo hot ends. The finger tighten nozzle doesn't give you enough clamping force to make sure that you're measuring resonance of the hot end only and not some of the board wiggling around. Both of these boards have their own MCU. The portable input shaper is set up like any MCU in Clipper, where you will SSH into your host, run the make menu config, put in the values provided by the manufacturer to generate a firmware file, which then gets transferred to your computer. You plug the portable input shaper in via USB. It appears as a drive, you drag the firmware file onto it, and when it boots the next time, it's flashed. The Nozzle ADXL is very different in that it is pre-flashed with a non-Clipper firmware, which means that unless Clipper does something that breaks compatibility, you never need to update this versus the portable input shaper where if you update Clipper on your host, you should probably also reflash the firmware to make sure that everything is in sync. The process of adding either of these boards to your printer's firmware is pretty much the same. Um, one thing to consider is that because these do contain MCUs, you're going to want to disable them within your printer firmware before you disconnect them. Otherwise, Clipper will give you an error. The easiest way to deal with this is to put the configuration for the input shaper in its own config file and then include that into your printer.cfg so that when you're ready to disconnect the input shaper board, you just have to comment out one line and then restart your firmware. And I will show you that when I get to testing. So I'm going to test these boards on my V2.4, which is running an EBB36, which also has an ADXL. So I'm going to include tests from that just so we have some sort of baseline to compare the results of both of these. One thing that I will say before I get started is that my V2 needs a rebuild. The input shaper results are probably going to be pretty ugly and there's a fair amount of ringing. I think I've got something going on with tap. I haven't rebuilt to revision eight yet. So I'm not as concerned with what the results are as much as being able to compare the results between the EBB36 and these two input shaping boards. So let's get started. Just to double check, I'll go here and look in my printer config and I'm on my EBB ADXL. So I'm going to go back and well, first thing I'm going to do before I run each of these is a home and QGL. To make sure that everything is level and ready to go. And now that I'm leveled and QGL'd, I will test resonances. Now that we're done testing resonances with the EBB, let's 
open up a terminal. I'm going to go into the Pi and generate my graphs. And once this is done, I'll go over to my FTP client. Drag this down, refresh that view. And I'm going to go ahead and download these. Now that I have those downloaded, what I'm going to do is delete all these files out. One thing that I've learned is that if you leave the CSV files in there and run the scripts to generate your graphs again, it will incorporate all of those graphs and your data will be garbage. Okay, so I'm going to go back here. I'm going to go into the printer config. Now I need to comment out the EBB and I'm going to actually do the portable input shaper next. So let me grab that, the portable input shaper plugged in. Going to move the printer head. And now I will install the portable input shaper and then restart the firmware and rerun the whole process. Just switching over to Phillips head. So this kit basically just has longer screws and a couple of plastic spacers. Okay, and with that secured, time to reboot firmware. And I will do the same procedure again. So first we will home, then QGL, then generate our graphs. So now that we have that resonance tested, I'm going to go ahead and rerun the scripts and generate the next set of graphs. Now double check in my downloads. Right, so we've got those. And again, I am going to delete these from the Raspberry Pi. Go here, 
into the printer config. I'm going to disable the portable input shaper. And save and restart that so that I can safely disconnect my USB cable. And remove portable input shaper. So now to install the nozzle ADXL, I am going to have to heat up my hot end so that I can remove the nozzle. And install the board. Then I will restart the firmware so that the system sees that ADXL. And probably the easiest way to do that is I'm just going to run my filament unload script. So now what I'm going to do is get this board in place and then as quickly as I can, turn off the heat to the hot end and kick in my cooling fan to cool this down quickly. Just torque this. And while I wait for that to cool down, which will only take a second, I can go ahead and make the change in the printer config to enable the nozzle. Just going to wait until that nozzle temp gets below 50, and then I will start the process again. And with that done, let's go back to the terminal, run those two scripts again to generate the last set of graphs, and then we'll take a look. So now that I've run the resonance testing with all three ADXLs, I've brought those results into my Mac and let's take a look at what there is to see. So this is the EBB36 ADXL. Looking at my X resonance, yes, it is incredibly ugly. That's not why we're here. So if we take a look, this is the result from the portable input shaper, which is totally different. Here's the EBB. Here's the portable input shaper. I think that one of the reasons for this is that the portable input shaper is reading right at the center of the tool head, which is probably one of the more stable spots, uh, given that I'm running tap and there is a little bit of play, obviously, in the, uh, in the tool head. When we look at the nozzle input shaper, why, that's even worse. But oddly enough, here let me turn off the portable input shaper and I'm gonna bring the opacity down on the nozzle so that we can see that overlaid with the EBB36. So the results are actually similar, uh, especially here in the 
primary ringing and then there's the secondary out here. Uh, it's just that the frequency itself has shifted for some reason, but the results are pretty similar in that there is a huge secondary resonance. And then I don't know how <laughs> the portable input shaper was so clean, but there it is. Uh, if we look at my Y axis, let me go back to here. So this is the Y axis reading for the EBB 36. Um, we can overlay the portable input shaper. So that's showing a little bit more resonance here in the X plus Y plus Z. So it looks like the portable input shaper was also seeing some more junk on the X axis versus the EBB 36. And then finally, we have the nozzle ADXL, which saw even more of that ringing on the X in the X direction. The, where is the Y axis? Oh, that's, that's a whole thing. So the main takeaway from all of this is that my tool head is jacked. <laughs> uh, I, as I said, I knew this going in. Um, later this summer, I'm going to rebuild the motion system, upgrade to tap revision eight, uh, replace all of my belts and bearings and just double check everything because this machine has been abused a little bit. Um, but getting back to the ADXLs, we have three very, very different results, which is better. It's debatable. Um, it's kind of hard to say because there's no, there's no real standard. This is absolutely what it is. And then we can compare uh, these things against a standard. So we're really just comparing them against each other. Um, the portable input shaper has convenience on its side because it's pretty easy to mount. There are also mounts uh, for the mini stealth burner. So it's pretty easy to take that and adapt it. Um, the nozzle ADXL is great in that you are measuring your resonance as close as you can possibly get to the nozzle, which is where you really want to know what those resonances are. The only caveat there is it's not compatible with a Revo. So if you're running a Revo, uh, I know there are adapters that people are working on to be able to hold an ADXL closer to the, the Revo nozzle. Um, so obviously part of your decision is going to be based on what hardware you're running and what works best for you and what is easiest, but they're both great options. Uh, the nozzle ADXL does have the advantage of not requiring any firmware configuration. You just take it out of the bag and it's ready to go. You just have to put that configuration file in your machine and include it in your printer config. So let us know what you think of what you saw with the results here. And we look forward to showing you more about some of the new and exciting tools that are out there to work on your printer.